check it out, dude. We're live back at QuarantineCon.com. And uh, with me is Mark Blair from Nerd News Now. What's up, Mark? What's up, Chaz? How you doing? I'm good, man. Thanks for sitting in on this thing. Check it out, dude. We're live. I've got to, uh, to mute my screen. Check it out, dude. Uh, this is uh, These interviews are uh, sponsored by The Adventure Begins. And one of the things you could do through The Adventure Begins is check out the r and Nerd on Twitch. So we can do Twitch <clears throat> is on, man. Cool. That's every Thursday, uh, every Wednesday at 7.30. Pop culture, general knowledge, trivia will send you some money so you can buy all your nerdy things at The Adventure Begins. How's that sound? Good? Sounds great. Now, this, this week's a special Star Wars edition, right? With May the 4th coming up? Yeah, it's Revenge of the 5th. Revenge of the 5th. Yeah, that's right. So check it out, man. Uh, we got some special dudes on the show right now. Some cool dudes. Our next guest. You may know from some e, uh, MTV jazz they did way back in the day. You may have seen him on Van's Warp Tour, or perhaps you saw him open up for Scott Stapp uh, of Creed fairly recently. The list goes on and on and on. Not only am I a fan of this band, I'm also a member. Hailing from East Texas, Rocket Ooh. Rocket Queen. Hey, hey, hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, real quick to the viewers or whatever, if you have a question um, and you want to interact with us, man, I'm looking at all the different feeds. So um, type in your question. Uh, maybe we'll answer it. Yeah. You guys cool with that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So let's all go around the room. Let people know who we are and what we do. Who are we starting with? You. You're the oh. leader. <laughs> <laughs> it's a short round over here. Uh, <laughs> I'm Walter Lee, and I sing and uh, play guitar in Rocket Queen. Hey, I'm Josh, and I'm the drummer. Cool. I'm Chaz. I'm the bassist. <clears throat> it's it's a triangle, not a round. <laughs> <laughs> it really is right there, man. That's one. <laughs> cool, man. We have a, a a quick or our first fan question. Kind underscore guitarist underscore Cairo asks, uh, it takes individuals to make up a band or group who are your influences, and do you remember when you knew you wanted to be a musician? Ooh, yeah. um, I do actually. I I mean, I always liked music, but I was uh, I think I was I think I was skateboarding, and I was watching a buddy of mine who was clearly way better than I was. <laughs> and uh, I just remember thinking, you know, maybe I should play music instead. And uh, I think that's when I decided, yeah, that this is probably the time to switch careers. <laughs> Let's play music. I'm a fairly decent guitar player. Hey, man, decent goes a long way. Apparently. <laughs> <coughs> Josh? Uh, yeah, man, pretty much the same. A uh, buddy of mine and me got together, started playing guitars, and um, he actually got a drum set. We're going to try to start a band, and I was the only one that could play the drums. So I dropped the guitar, picked up the sticks, and it's history, man. Pick up sticks. That's a game. Trademark yeah. by Josh way back in the day. <laughs> Parker brother. <laughs> Dude, for me, influence-wise, it was uh, Guns N' Roses. I saw Guns N' Roses, and I was like, that's, that's <laughs> who I want to be when I grow up. And then Kiss, obviously. Um, but, um, yeah, man, those were my two influences. Mm -hmm. So, cool. Now we got all the those questions out of the way. Mark, it's all you, baby. All right. And uh, first off, I just want to say, uh, Josh and Walter, I've never met you, but you're making it really easy because Walter, the vocalist, is right up front, and Josh, the drummer, is behind him. So <laughs> it's already, you guys already got this down. Do you, do you always walk into places like that, like in position <laughs> to do vocals and drums all the time? Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, it, it's funny because as boisterous as I may be on stage, I'm the exact opposite most of the time. So usually Chaz will walk in in front of me and uh, I'll walk in in the back. <clears throat> yeah, they're like, who's that guy? Because <laughs> you're not the bassist. So. <laughs> that guy's clearly the lead singer. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> well, I know you guys have three studio albums. Is that correct? Yes. And then you're uh, working on a new one, so we'll talk about that in a second. But I, So I know you've got some cool stuff coming up, but let's go back a little. How did Rocket Queen get started working with MTV early on? 
Um, it, it was kind of funny because, you know, we were doing, we started out in 03 and uh, basically we made a record, but we kind of just wanted to play live and that's all we wanted to do. So we went in, uh, called a called a friend uh, and uh, recorded a record, put it out and then started touring. Well, in between that record and the next one, we were like, well, we got to start writing. And we had some friends in Dallas, uh, you know, um, that were doing kind of it was like the beginning of a studio where it was in like a rehearsal room. And it was back in the day when it was just in the beginning of like home recordings. Uh, it wasn't so so easily done back then. <clears throat> But uh, we became close with them, and they were really good to us and helped us out and recorded uh, the next big thing in, in demo form. And mm -hmm. on a whim, our guitar player, Chris, at the time, he, uh, he just submitted for this contest. It was like a MySpace uh, wind-up records uh, contest to be in this movie. You're showing our age. Right. Yeah. I know. <laughs> his age <laughs> <laughs> but uh so we he submitted it and honestly he kind of forgot about it he was like yeah whatever it's no big deal so out of nowhere they called us and they were like hey you made the finals uh next week we're gonna announce you know the final three and then after that we'll pick the final one well, next week came and they called and they were like, hey, guess what, guys? You won the whole thing. I guess they got tired of messing with it. They were just like, no preliminaries, no nothing. They were just like, you just you just won the whole thing. And they sent us in to record with uh, with a, one of their producers. Uh, we did it in Dallas as well. And uh, it got on the movie and then it ended up doing a lot of stuff with uh, MTV and like Newport Harbor and uh, a couple of other things that I'm not really sure of. I can't really remember at this time, but... But yeah, so that's how it kind of came about. <clears throat> you know what the funny thing is? It, um, no matter what I'm doing, if John Tucker Must Die is ever playing anywhere around the entire world, I get a message. Hey, man, <laughs> John Tucker Must Die is on. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> like it's, or it's kind of cool when you walk down. Like Walmart still sells the album every once in a while. They put it on an end cap, and it's just oh, right nice. there. And I always stop and pick it up just to see uh, the Rocket Queen. It, it I it's one of I like the song. It's fun. Yeah. I listened to it the other day for the first time in I don't know, like five, six, seven years. Uh just it, as I was transferring files from a computer to another computer and it came up and I was like, Well, this is interesting. This is, <laughs> I, I I feel like my voice has changed a little since then. <laughs> just dropped the uh, tuning down. I I've, I've, I've been wanting to do the song. I think I, I hit it. puberty. It's more like it. My Which God sack you'll be able to do it <laughs> <laughs> but yeah they uh they sold a uh walmart had this cool thing and I, I think i still have it somewhere where they packaged the movie with like a specialty disc and it was like all american rejects uh okay go and then rocket queen and those were like the only like a sampler cd that they gave away with it and i, I got a found a copy of it and it's that's kind of cool you know to be one of three bands on there out of many I wonder how many people had to Google both MySpace and MTV in the last. <laughs> it's funny because in the feeds there was MySpace, haha, -ha, and on another feed it was uh, <laughs> MySpace, huh? <laughs> question mark. Question mark. <laughs> yeah, well, that's probably. Yeah. <laughs> well, now y'all went to Nashville recently to record your upcoming album. What can we hear something from that? Um, you know, we, we do, uh, we tease a few things here and there. We had kind of put together a plan to release it. And then, uh, we ended up getting the, the Scott Stapp tour. So we pushed it back because it wasn't ready. And, um, as we did that, we kind of sat on some of the material and we realized, you know, I think, I don't think the record's ready to be released yet. So that's, we've kind of been planning on doing, some more songs and doing some different stuff with the songs we already have. I mean, the songs are fantastic. Our producer, Zach Malloy did a fantastic job with it. Uh, we had our buddy, Rich Redman, uh, that plays for drums for Jason Aldean. Uh, our drummer almost lost a hand but right before we went in to, to record. So he had surgery. I'm just kidding. It was his thumb. It, it wasn't that serious, but he couldn't play. <laughs> you need a thumb to hold a drumstick. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so we called Rich and 
he he recorded the whole thing for us uh, in a day almost. Um, so we had a lot of good people in it, and it, it's it's we're proud of it. We just have a couple of ideas because it's been a little while since we did it, and we're uh, we have a plan, and I think it's going to come off really well, and I think it's going to make everything that much better when it when we finally get it out. So yeah, like like Walter said, it, it it's got a lot of great tunes on it, and the listening to the demo tracks or whatever, you can definitely tell we were in Nashville on some <laughs> <laughs> and That's some of us yeah. played live as well but uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we played more than a few of them live so anybody that's been to our live show has heard you know songs like like falling down and time bomb and uh even a one that we won't release called red light um we played that a few times speaking of sounding nashville um, so good though <laughs> by the way jay's uh jay's not in the studio but uh he's in the feed Jay. <laughs> Jay. Where are you at, man? Somebody asked. That's fun. He's so lazy. I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. <laughs> uh, now, guys, how would you say this is going to differ from your previous albums? Um, One I thing I like about Rocket Queen, uh, real quick, if you look at, if you listen to the very first album, and then all all the albums that come out after that, it there's development and growth so that's one thing I, I like if you pick up a rocket queen album you're not gonna it, it doesn't sound like the previous one <clears throat> yeah that's definitely true i think that's something i don't know if it's as conscious as, as i would like to think it is you know like intentional or anything but i i feel like we get you know we do something and and we try to do it to the best of our ability and we kind of get i don't want to say bored but you know, we get complacent and we're like, well, we got to try something new. So it, it's definitely the new stuff is going to develop uh, as uh, us as songwriters. And uh, we do a lot of the production ourselves, too. So, you know, as as a producer, I've grown leaps and bounds since the first couple of records. Uh, I, I wasn't a producer on the first record, but I learned a lot from our producer. And then the second and... Uh, um, third record I produced with our guitar player Chris co-produced it together and I learned a lot from him while we were doing it and I've been you know continuing that journey since for the last 10 years trying to figure it out and I think you know I think this one's going to benefit from that a ton you know we get to do a lot of the pre-production on our own and make it as best as we can and then that way when we hit the studio with our with our quote-unquote real producers <laughs> then you know then they'll make it sound better than we can. Which and we can great. call them real producers because, you know, they have something to do with Grammys and stuff. Yeah, so. you know, a couple, couple of Grammy nods in there, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I, I, I was laughing while uh, Walter was talking. It had nothing to do with what he was saying. I, I was reading the feed, and uh, Jay says, yo, in Ned. And he says, bed, not Ned. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, somebody replies, "Lucky Ned." <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. um, we do have a fan question uh, at uh, at Bandito Bobo two three one four asks, "What is your writing process like?" Huh? Uh, that kind of differs. Uh, it just depends. Um, I'm writing a song right now that <clears throat> that I've been. Uh, and I've been wanting to write for over a year, and it, uh, it, it's something that it just takes that spark. It takes that 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 ding, that aha moment uh, of which I had probably uh, maybe maybe you know about a month ago, and I was like, oh, this is it, and I've been waiting to write the song. So I've been I've been doing that. Um, you know, I'll go in and. <clears throat> If, if I'm doing it by myself, sometimes we'll all sit around in a room and, and just kind of hash out ideas and be like, hey, what do you want to do here? Let's try this. Let's try that. Um, and then sometimes uh, I'm just sitting at home and, and I'll, you know, start, you know, fiddling around with a melody or something or an idea. And like I said, with this track, I had this idea of, of this track, this this thing that I wanted to do. And I started fleshing it out, you know, working around the drums and the, the guitars and keyboards and stuff like that. And 
then you know you work on the arrangement you put together kind of like a demo and once i get the music together when i'm doing it by myself once i get the music together i you know bounce it down to an mp3 and i just sit there and i write you know and sometimes it comes within a day sometimes it takes you know a couple of months to to make it right but you just keep hacking at it until it feels good you know and sometimes it doesn't feel good until a month after you finished it because you're kind of in the in the trenches of you know insecurity of being a musician and you don't really know if something is good or not until you've stepped you finished it and stepped away from it and you know go back to it and you're like oh yeah it came out good <clears throat> so it's kind of kind of one of the processes yeah and usually what Walter writes uh, mm-hmm. ends up pretty pretty good because he writes all of it <laughs> so. that's not true. <laughs> um, at Chelsea B asks, uh, what are some of the main topics uh, for most of your songs, and have they changed over the to- over time? I can I can answer. Have they yeah. changed over time? Yes, I would assume so. But uh, as far as main topics, what do you usually like to write about? Um, growth, growth. I, I uh, I'm always on a constant journey to spiritually and emotionally better myself as a person. Um, so I find that that falls into the category sometimes. And sometimes sometimes you want to exercise demons and sometimes you want to, uh, you want to, you know, write something towards the future of, of the way you would like it to be or something like that. <clears throat> so I think that's kind of one of the ways that, or that's some of the ways that I, put down content and then again sometimes you just you listen to somebody else and you hear something that they say and it sparks a whole different like train of thought or a thought pattern that that resonates with you and it doesn't have anything to do with what they said but what they what they did say triggered whatever your emotion is so uh we have a a comment from pete bobliss senior when your tour van breaks down (laughs) favorite shop (laughs) What's your favorite shop? Yeah. Uh, the one that's close to you. <laughs> <laughs> the one that you work at, Pete. Um, do that, it, actually, it is. That's, oh, I know who that is. That's Yeah. Yeah, it is. that His was our favorite shop because when we were stuck in Atlanta, Georgia, man, he tried everything he could. to And like, oh, man, he went so far above and beyond. Like, we have been so grateful for what he did for us. And he didn't fix anything because... <laughs> You know, he did that wasn't his thing. Like it was transmission and you know, he did tires and stuff like that, but he tried and his mechanics tried and like oh man, it was a nightmare. And uh I think there's a, a, a portrait that uh that Zach Terry drew of our van. It's like while we were sitting there in their waiting room, he took these colors that you know, for kids that were there and just drew the van like on fire. And it was just like, yeah, because we had to drive back from uh, Atlanta, uh, further than Macon, Georgia, from Macon to Tyler, Texas, in second gear, going 40 miles an hour the whole way back, uh, because we didn't have a choice. It was either that or just leave everything there and just set it on fire and walk away. <laughs> but yeah, he he tried his best. That was like our last ditch effort before we drove back at 40 miles an hour. Um, <laughs> was hanging out with him. He took us to get food too. So. <laughs> really good dude. Really good dude. <laughs> That's awesome. hey, this uh, next question is for each of you. Let's start with Josh. What's the best and worst thing about touring? Uh, well, I'm still the new guy, so I've only been in the band for about a year and a half, and I have not been on tour yet. So um, we've been to Houston a couple times. We went to Shreveport, which is awesome. Um that's about it. That's all I've done with the guys. But uh, I think the last time we played, uh, we went to <clears> Houston, <throat> talking about the van breaking down. We were uh, on the loop in Tyler, and the van shut down. We were in the turning lane. Tons of people around us, cars behind us, the lady <laughs> beside me looking. So I jump out, open the hood, and I know zero about engines or mechanics, <clears throat> anything like that. And um, me being the short guy, too, i got to <laughs> reach in there. <laughs> Wiggle something. I don't know what it is, but I wiggled it. Got the van going. But uh, 
but that, that's my extent so far, man. I mean, honestly, I can't wait to get on the road with these guys. I mean, it's been a blast being in the band and, uh, you know, playing with them. Everybody's super talented, super cool. Super uh, Chaz, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I might be cool, but I ain't talented. Uh, by the way, we got a whole bunch of people, like, joining and stuff. So if any of you guys have a question, man, just write it in and <clears throat> we'll ask. Uh, as far as Josh's um, video, we, there's video of him doing that. With <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, chat, yeah, wiggle, baby, wiggle. Yeah. Um, so make sure you hit up the uh, Rocket Queen Facebook page so you can check out said video. <laughs> <clears throat> best and worst thing about touring. Uh, the best is, man, I love to travel. So get to see um, all the stuff that I haven't seen before. And when you know, we were touring, I was the driver just because I wanted to take in all those sites and things. And I don't, I don't mind driving. So that's probably the best thing. Um, what's up, Hart? And Michael Thompson, very cool. Um, the worst thing is just being around each other 24-7. <laughs> I mean, I love these guys. Man, um, I don't know. It can put a strain on friendships, that's, that's for sure, if you don't know how to deal with it properly. And uh, so that's probably the worst thing about touring for me, to be honest. Uh, Jay says, missing family, dirty toilets, and altered <laughs> sleeping habits. <laughs> Is that the best? Wait, is dirty toilets the best thing or worst thing? About it's probably knowing him. It's probably for the him. Best. It's a little of both. <laughs> <laughs> I've got tons of pictures of Jay standing awkwardly at random, really bad toilets uh, <laughs> that may make it online sometime. I don't know. <laughs> See, and if he were here, he would be able to tell you about Walter's sleeping habits. But you know, he's not here to do that. So, bro, I'm a t I can tell you now. I'm a TV sleeper. Like, I'm just not sleeping in a strange room without some sort of visual being able to, like, yeah, I'm not waking up in the darkness. You're crazy. <laughs> no, we, I think, we huh? would split up. We would split up. So Jay and I, um, if we were lucky enough to get two rooms, then Jay and I would sleep in a room because we've. it's got to be completely dark. And uh, we're not big on having the TV on while we sleep. Uh, so... <laughs> He says, yes, yeah, SOB sleeps with the TV on. So, but, uh, yeah, usually if we were all in the same room, yeah, the TV we'd be on. But I, it didn't bother me as much as it did anybody else. I try to keep it on, on mute and put it on a channel that's, a, you know, kind of dark, stays dark. It doesn't pop open, like, infomercials that are big, bright, white backgrounds. I try to be as, as uh, uh, courteous and thoughtful as I can. Um, but, you know. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I apologize. So what's the best and worst thing about touring for you? Uh, the best part is definitely Chaz driving and not me. <laughs> um, no, I, it's uh, touring is interesting because like you really do. You, you miss everyone at home and, you know, you miss things that that you didn't really want to miss. But at the same time, there's a point that you get when you're out where it's like, you know, there's just nothing I can do about the things at home for the most part. So you kind of have to let them go. And, uh, it's a little liberating being somebody who's had responsibilities, you know, all their life. It's a little liberating being like, okay, I mean, I can't, I, I've got to, I'm out here for a month. I can't do anything physically until I get back. So, all right. This is the train I'm on, and let's let's go. <clears throat> but definitely the worst is being away from, you know, the people. Like, everything for you at home stops, and everyone else at home kind of keeps going. And you kind of come back in, and you have to find your, your, your spot in there. And, uh, you know, and hopefully you have a good, uh, good base at home to kind of, you know, hold it down while you're gone. You know, <clears throat> it's a very weird feeling when you're gone for X amount of time and you come back. You don't know what to do with yourself, uh, really, because you're in the schedule of with us driving ourselves to a lot of these venues. It was OK. You have to be at the venue by this time. You have to have uh, sound check is this time. Now you've only got 30 minutes to get ready and then do put on a show. After the show, you're at the merch table and then you're loading up and then you're driving to the next place i mean um yeah. how much sleep you get who knows but then when you come home you're like i don't know what to do like yeah 
So that that's pretty odd. It's weird too because on your <clears throat> when you get back, you can't wait to get home for like two days, and then you're like, I can't wait to get back out on the road. You know, it's just it's this never ending cycle that like you want to be home when you're gone, you want to be gone when you're home. Uh, depending, you know, but it just depends on you know. Again, it depends on what you have at home to keep you there. So, for sure. <clears throat> Uh, Walter, just a heads up, I'm a TV sleeper too, and a per- perfect show to fall asleep to, Murder, She Wrote, Angela Lansbury. <laughs> nice. Audio on, audio on just a little bit. Yeah. It'll draw you, it'll draw you right off. Her- I've, I've, I've been watching, uh, for the last year or so, I've just been putting The Office on, because I've I've made it through the whole series like four times already, like actually watching it, because it's just that good. So like I can turn it on and like turn the turn it down as much as possible and and just I'm done. <laughs> so but I'm getting better at it. I'm I'm working on it. Like I'm I'm uh I'm definitely getting better at it. But it's just a bad habit from a kid from being a kid doing it as a kid. Uh real quick we will not talk about Kid Rock in any shape or fashion. Um <laughs> we have a question when are you guys going to play Tyler gig? Are you guys going to play a solid gig after this whole thing blows over? Um, I know we've talked about, we just don't know where to play. Clicks is no longer around. Yeah. There's places to play. We will, we will find a place to play. We will play Tyler. It's our hometown. We've, we've played Tyler since before clicks was clicks and we'll play Tyler, you know, no matter what. We'll find a way. If we don't play Tyler, we'll play Longview. If we don't, you know, <clears throat> we'll play within a 30-minute radius, and we'll make sure that people know about it. I don't care. If, if we have to rent out a VFW hall and, and put it on ourselves, we will. We Most of us come from a pretty punk rock DIY background anyway, so we'll play in somebody's garage or a house. We don't, we don't care. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, as long as you guys are there, we will be there. Yeah, we played on a Popeye the Sailor Man boat once. We played, we played next to a giant garbage pail kid once. We played ah. things, my friend. Yeah, yeah, we've done some strange things. Yeah, Michael, we will be back in Conroe. We played in March. Was our last show. It was really big too. That was yeah. really good. Oh, that was really awesome. So, if all of you cats, to the people who came out to the Conroe show, thank you. We will be back. They want us back. And we had yeah. plans to do a whole bunch of things live, but, you know, with the whole COVID thing, what can you do? So we are going to be playing a lot, a lot of shows. Mm-hmm. Lot of- yeah. Now, uh, is there anyone that you guys have opened up for that you were just really pumped up to open up for? And then how did the show go in reality? Um, I mean, we've opened up for a lot of people and we've done a, we've done a ton I, I mean, I, I hate to say we're kind of always excited. We're we're just excited to play. Um, you know, we we want to do a good job. Uh, I think the f- beginning of going out with with Scott was super exciting because we didn't really like we didn't know what to expect. We hadn't we hadn't done anything on that level. Uh, so it's like every time we kind of like do something that's kind of leveling up for us, it's super exciting. Um, it can get a little uh, monotonous to kind of play the same places and do the same thing. So when we do something like that, it's it's exciting. <clears throat> and I, I remember, you know, uh, being there for the first time and, uh, you know, look, we're, we're playing our first show. It's in Florida. We've driven, you know, from Tyler to Florida. Um, and uh, it, it was gr- it was great because I remember I remember looking over and, you know, and Scott was standing there side stage, just kind of watching. And like, as we were loading in, we met a, you know, met a bunch of his band and we didn't, we didn't know how close we would become with those guys. And, and, uh, it was just really cool. It was a really cool experience. It was one of them that was, uh, that was super awesome. Oh yeah, for sure. I was so nervous, <laughs> <laughs> which never happens. Like that yeah. guy doesn't get shaken, but he was shook. It was great. It was crazy, but I, I, a lot of it, you know, the first show was like this theater. It, it, uh, it was all seats, and yeah. you know, they're telling you, "Hey, man, you gotta pump. You're you're the main support act, so you gotta pump them up. Make sure they're ready for Scott." And I'm like, "They're all sitting down." 
<laughs> but we got him up. It was fun. After the first 10 seconds, it was, it was, it was fun. Um, one of the cool things, you know, about touring is you're jamming on, on stage and you look, you know, to your left or to your right. And there's like a celebrity there. Like we had uh, the lead singer for live come in and check out our show. Uh, what's his name? Ed Kowalski. He was at one of the shows. He was just hanging out watching us. I remember Jay getting super um, stoked about <laughs> is it Quiet Riot or um, some band. If he was Ron Keel. And, and, and like and they played like the night before, but he was still in town and he was just like, yes. But <laughs> did he show up to the show? I don't know. Jake, Jake. Anyway, it's cool stuff like that. It's the little thing. And speaking of uh, seats and venues, what are the best and worst venues you guys have played in? <laughs> I I wouldn't say best and worst, but we've had some very strange ones. <clears throat> and strange for very different reasons. I remember on tour we played, and I don't, I'm awful with geography. Um, so I don't remember where it was. Chaz will know. Um, but we played and it was like this dinner hall and everyone was sitting down at ba- like dining tables. Like, you know, the whole like white tablecloth and, you know, like glasses. And that was cool. And it was still a really good show. But and then it was on the beach and to the left of uh, the stage was like a glass wall and the waves were just pounding this wall and I was just like, that can't like that can't be good. That's not gonna hold. But I mean, obviously it, it does. They know what they're doing. They that's their venue. Um, but yeah, so like you know, you do weird stuff like that. And then he wasn't kidding. We played a place right next to a life size garbage pail kid or cabbage patch kid or giving birth to a smaller cabbage patch kid. It was really weird, but it was cool. I mean, it was a murder mystery dinner theater type deal like. <laughs> Uh, we've done some it, 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 it's it's interesting we've done some interesting shows that's for sure well you get to this thing where you're just like eh, I want to play anywhere so right <laughs> it sounds good until like you're, you you <clears throat> get your band to play said place and then they're like what what have you done this time um, yeah Jay's right it's called the Crooked Seagull was uh, that joint I think um, but uh, Jay has the memory uh, the memory of the band like I, I I'm not good with times and things. I, I'll know the venue and I'll, I'll remember the show, but I don't remember where it is. But Jay, he's like, yeah, that's <coughs> matter of fact. It was uh, he said he thinks uh, what we were talking about was in Jersey with all the nice, all the nice things. Um, so was he has a crazy strand good or something. What's that? I think it was on the Strand or something. Not not Stone Pony, but it was on like uh, I know that we went and got a funnel cake. Uh, after the yeah, it was that's what rock and rollers do. Yeah, <laughs> right. What'd you do after the show backstage? Funnel cake. Okay, right on. <laughs> Neighbor mind six six one one seven asks on tour or not? Uh, well, we just did that. Uh, has is there a memorable show or venue that sticks out to you all? I guess uh, a memorable venue. Uh, we were talking about it not too long ago. Was um, was it in Ohio? The the track and it had all oh, the MI Speedway. Yeah, that was yeah. cool. <clears throat> it was it like in the middle of a cornfield. <laughs> it was <laughs> weird. Yeah, like like it was huge, <clears throat> and it was like a all it, it was called BMI Speedway. And I remember like getting like going there. We were like, okay, so this is like a in the middle of like a big speedway, or like this is going to be interesting. And we were driving through like miles of like cornfields and like it was just weird like and then we got there and it was it was big it was really big but it was like it was like a go-kart speedway or something like that so like it wasn't what we were thinking it was going to be but it was still like oh it was fun it was a lot of fun okay. <clears throat> just like opened up almost kind of reminded me of like uh cynthia woods but like a, a smaller miniature version almost yeah yeah i could see that it, it looked like something out of a movie. I don't know. It was so surreal and kind of crazy, but uh, that was really cool. I really liked that venue. Jay likes it too. Silos everywhere, he says. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, Walter, so that sounds like something out of Field of Dreams. So in that spirit of Field of Dreams, one musician from the past can walk out and perform with you on stage. Who is it? Prince. That was, that was a quick answer, but a great answer. 
Yeah, I mean, it has to be. Like, I would love to play with Prince. I would love to play with Steven Tyler. I would love to play with a guy named Butch Walker, who's a little less known, but twice as good as both of them. Um, uh, but, yeah, I, I mean, if I had to pick one, it would definitely be Prince. <clears throat> and, uh, Josh, same question. Anyone you could play with, who would it be? Uh, probably Danny Carey, man. I'm a I knew it. huge Tool fan. Yeah. Uh, not gonna deny that. Uh, <laughs> that'd be great. Yeah, fucking a. Oh, it's just anybody, huh? I thought we were filled a dream in this. I was like, yeah. I have no idea. It, who... Anyone can walk out of the field of dreams, anyone. but the thing is, if you walk in and stay, then you're stuck. So hey. I guess <laughs> you you could, they will come. <clears throat> I could perform a Kid Rock and then push him in there. <laughs> Sucker, get out of here, Bob Ritchie. <laughs> <laughs> but Chaz, uh, who would it be? Any anybody? Open it up. Who would it be? Dude, I I mean, I honestly have no idea. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Not a clue. Mine I don't would know. be Jabberjaw. No one yeah. asked. It would be Jabberjaw. Jabberjaw. You played a mean, yeah, you played a mean shark. Yeah, yeah, the shark. A minute. Oh, you know, if we're gonna do that, man, I'd jam out with Josie and the Pussycats. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> No, probably like uh, I I don't know why, but Chuck Berry keeps coming in into mind. Maybe because um, that would be fun. It'd be it'd be really cool, you know. Maybe uh, maybe Marty McFly. That would be kind of yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be really cool. We're really gonna do that? Just stay just stay away from your mom. <laughs> Get off my aunt, boy. See, Chaz, we made it. We made it nerdy after all. We made it. <laughs> brought it back to nerd news now. Um. Hey, so what is the ultimate direction for Rocket Queen? I'll let uh, Walter. I'll let you start with that. Uh, forward, always, always forward. I know that's kind of a, you know, that's not really the answer you were you're asking for, but you know, we we want to continue moving in a direction that we're proud of and we're excited to be a part of. Um, we're super excited about the new music. We think it's going to take us in a direction that we've never been. And we're very excited about that. Uh, you know, I think we probably have the best head on our shoulders that we've ever had as far as like game plan and planning. And and that's kind of one of the things that Rocket Queen's always done. We've always just been like, get in the van and we'll end we'll end up where we end up. You know, let's let's make it happen. We'll make it happen. Whatever, whatever we gotta do, let's just make it happen. And we figure it out as we go. Uh, but I think f- for the first time in a long time we've had we've had a lot of good ideas on as far as like moving forward and <clears throat> and uh exciting things that are coming up for us so um new music new tours uh new videos new content i mean just as much as possible and now it really uh, sucks about this whole covid thing <laughs> we were like on track i was like yeah and then uh, just so much, so, so much was going to happen. But, you know, we'll pick it back up. I just want to kick COVID in the, in the sack. <laughs> that's, the, that's my new saying today. <laughs> sack 19. <laughs> sack 19. <laughs> that's a good punk band. There it is. Well, as, speaking of, not, of being knocked off track or not even being on track, what advice do you guys give to people who want to start their own band? Stop. Go to school. <laughs> Don't. It's. I mean, it's stressful. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't. Well, I, I, if you're gonna start one to think that uh, for money and think you're gonna, you know, <laughs> don't do it. Yeah. But if you're having fun, man, it, it can be a lot of fun. <clears throat> so, yeah, man, why not? Just do it. Just don't do it if you think you're gonna get rich off of it because that ain't happening. Nope. <laughs> Yeah, do it for the uh, the passion. Probably uh, that's that's where it all comes back. It's not about the uh, money in the bank, but it's just about good vibes, man. Because like you want to you want to be loving what you do, uh, for sure. Um, speaking of that, uh, you guys are doing it, and you do rock. So, how can fans listen to your music? Um, obviously the local. I mean the uh, the the normal avenues uh skype um you know itunes youtube spotify, spotify. i mean that's a skype that's weird spotify. yeah we'll be skyping our not listen to it on skype. <laughs> that's weird i mean yeah spotify uh 
you know, iTunes, uh, Apple Music, um, live shows, YouTube, Internet, Facebook. You know, uh, we put separate content on our Instagram uh, and our Facebook sometimes. So and if you follow our our Instagram, you'll see a lot of like sneak peeks of uh, new music in the stories. Um, because, you know, I'll, if I'm working on something, sometimes I'll throw up a little a little snippet and, you know. Just because you know, it, it, it's fun to give people something and get an get an immediate you know response and uh, so anywhere on uh, online or social media where you know everybody knows where to where to find bands nowadays you know we've got that we've got the Facebook we've got the Twitter we've got you know <clears throat> all of that we stuff the MySpace the MySpace <laughs> I think we still have one <laughs> that's what I'm saying we probably still have one. <laughs> we had a good MySpace. We had a guy out of Canada named Chris Moratis that was a wizard at uh, building MySpaces. And he, man, he did this amazing one. I was like, wow, that's really good. And then everybody moved and stopped going to MySpace. So we we're like, oh, well, I guess we're going over to freaking blue and white over here. <laughs> the least appealing looking platform ever. <laughs> But hey, also real quick, what's a way that fans of bands can support those bands during these trying times when a lot of bands are out on the grind selling merch at shows, but they can't do that right now? So what would be your advice for a fan to kind of pitch in and help out? Man, just interact like that's it doesn't take, you know, it doesn't take anything to like, comment or share or, you know, like the biggest thing that you can do for somebody who's trying to uh to gather awareness is make your people aware of them. You know, it's like you may not realize it, but if if you pass it on inadvertently to three, four, five people, then that's people that those bands may not have reached on their own, no matter how good they are. Without people being involved, it's never going to be successful. So, you know, just try to get the word out as much as possible. If they have something you want uh, merch-wise, then get it. If they have something you need, get it, you know, do whatever it is, you know, that you can to, to support in any way that you can. I mean, that's the best thing that I could say. <clears throat> and you said it well, my friend. <laughs> cool, man. Um, <laughs> Jay says we need a TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Jay can be in charge of the TikTok. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Kelly would love for us to have a TikTok as well. So check it out, man. Uh, thanks to everybody who hung out with us today and asked all the questions and interact with us and all that jazz. Make sure, you know, you like and uh, send us messages and all that jazz on, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm still reading comments, on Facebook <laughs> and Instagrams and all that jazz. So um, the last question, number one, thanks, Mark, for mediating this uh this whole thing. I appreciate Thanks, it, Mark. dude. No problem. Uh, Good to meet you guys, Walter and Josh, and yeah, Rocket awesome, Queen. Man. So, yeah, head over to Rocket Queen, pick up some merch, or just uh, give them a few clicks on Spotify, follow them on their social. Uh, just help support during this time, mm -hmm. and we cannot wait for you guys to be uh, doing a concert on a Garbage Bell Kid or a Popeye <laughs> boat or something in the future. Yes. <laughs> we will be doing that. And uh, as a lot of you guys know, and I said at, at the beginning, <laughs> Derek and I co-host the adventure begins tv show it drops on certain social media platforms every thursday and on roku for me and for you so this last question it's for all of us um you walk into a deli and there's your name walter josh chas jay you're a part of this as well what's up alonzo um what is your sandwich made of we're like, I'm all, I'm, uh, let me order the Rocket Queen Josh, man. What's on that sandwich? Something with Indian food, right? We usually go and get Indian food. Let, no, no, no. Uh, this, is, this is not the Rocket food. Queen sandwich. It is your sandwich. Gosh, the and Rocket Queen Josh. The Rocket Queen Josh. 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 I got it. Uh, probably some drumsticks. You know, <laughs> some uh, drumstick shavings. As a drummer, you play. There's a lot of drumstick shavings. <laughs> you know? I don't know if you're going to want to eat that, but it's going on my sandwich. <laughs> Well, there you go, man. You can have uh, the meat from a chicken drumstick onto the sandwich. So right now we got bread, chicken meat. So we got a chicken sandwich. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. 
Now, the reason why I ask is because uh, we're asking all of the uh, all the uh, QCon guests and on a future episode of The Adventure Begins, Jarek and I will take said sandwich and actually try it, as long as it's reasonable. We're not going to put sardines <laughs> and chocolate sauce on, uh, you know, two two pairs of socks or something like that. Uh, Josh, your sandwich is boring, sir. <laughs> I even gave you that. You're the only group of people I gave a heads up to. <laughs> uh, uh, what about you? Um... Uh, uh, it's it would have to be the, so does it have to be on bread no it could be on anything your sandwich it could be a wrap or just whatever okay so i think what i would do is do something uh with some sort of uh tortilla wrap but it would be uh filled with paneer makani and uh that's straight indian food um i mean if it's going to be mine that's that's exactly with uh, you know, with samosas on the side, veggie samosas on the side. So, but yeah, it wouldn't so be a sandwich. It would it would be a pizza. Is what it would be. It would be a pe- paneer makani pizza. Is what it would be. There you go, like a calzone. That's like a sandwich, right? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. <clears throat> right on. What about you, Jay? Jay, he still hasn't said anything. Um, maybe we'll get his later. Cool, man. Well, dudes. Thanks very much for hanging out with. It's good to see you guys. <laughs> yeah, it's been a month since yeah. we were physically seeing each other. Yeah, since you guys been gone, it's been hell for me. Ah, <laughs> hey man, our very uh, our next interview is at seven thirty with the Queen of Cosplay, talking Lana Marie. Seven thirty, she's going to talk about her acting jazz her cosplay jazz, and uh, she designs costumes as well. Maybe she could design us a costume we can wear on stage or we're playing next to a whole bunch of scary uh, dolls and boats and things. Cool, man. That's it for this interview. We will see you guys shortly. Later. Here's Counter Space, by the way. Do you guys have any D&D stuff? I hate busy days. Man, he's never late. Never gets old. Dude, you're late. Really?